Hello, my peeps. Um, I originally made this video without realizing that the mic was muted. So I'm trying to do this as a voiceover. So it's going to be a little off. I'm a little off. So, it, it, you know, it works. Um, and the dog keeps barking this morning. So let's hope we can get through without that. This is the Haunted Home Kit. And I will explain as we go. But I, I put 16 of these together. And I learned a few of them, a few things as I went. Um, it started out when I put my own home house together. Uh, then I went and helped at a class with three adults and another demonstrator and the two of us were helping because I had the demo model already done and had and done it. Um, and that was a whole different experience than me just putting my one house together uh, sitting at my craft desk and learned a whole bunch from that. So when it got time to do it for 16, nine to 14 year olds, I ended up putting the houses together myself ahead of time, thankfully. So I've learned a few things as I go. So here's what I thought I would help you save some frustration is by telling you how, what I learned 16 houses deep. Um, when I originally put my house together, you can see me holding my tear and tape there. I used tear and tape, my favorite adhesive. I didn't want to use a glue gun because I didn't want to have to have these 16 teenagers with glue guns. I sat at my desk. I put my house together. It took me about 20 minutes. I got the house together, decorated. It sat there for a month on my shelf. Everything was fine. Seams were fine. It was all good. When we went to the other class with the grown-ups, um, I said, no, you don't need a hot glue gun. We'll do tear and tape. It works fine. Um, the houses, if they are not perfectly square and level, or not, well, maybe not perfectly, but fairly square and level, um, they won't hold. There's too much stress on the seams, and they just keep popping. The roofs kept popping off, and then the side would open, and they were getting a little bit manhandled as they were doing it. So in the end, it took, like, the person whose house it was, myself and the other demonstrator, and a hot glue gun to try to like get these things apart and back together and, and redo them again. Um, so I think part of it is going to have to do with your, uh, your situation, like where you're, where you're doing it, if they're experienced crafters or not, but knowing that the, the girls that I was going to do these houses with would probably be a little rougher with their house. I opted for the glue gun. Um, what you're going to see there, I'm showing you is the seams in the front. Um, you have the speed is of the essence. I don't know why my house is flipping right now. Speed is of the essence. Um, and that's that's the trick to the glue gun, but it, it can be done. Um, you just have to have a plan. So I'm going to sort of show you how I planned it out. Uh, by the time I got to house number 16, I was cracking those things off. It was taking me only about 10 minutes and boom, we were done. So like I said, I figured out the best way. I tried a few different things as I went. I figured out the best way to go as we were going. Um, the one thing I will tell you, if you do decide you're putting these houses together for an event, I wanted the girls to decorate as much as possible, so I left off all the decorations. The instructions do say to put your window pieces in before you put your house together. I didn't do that because I wanted them to decorate. It wasn't until we got to the event that they were trying to figure out how to reach their hand up into that little spot, because once the roof is on, that little widow's peak is fairly tight. So if you are going to pre-assemble them, at least take the window with the chandelier piece and put it in because it gets a really little hard. We managed to do it. But it gets hard to put that one window in. If you're just putting your own house together, put your windows on first. Okay, so the one of the secrets to success, like I said, speed is a an important factor here, is to have all your stuff ready to go. So open your kit package and take out the pieces that make the house. They're basically the gray pieces and the black roof pieces that make the house. Take them all out. We'll get them ready to go. Um, I'm not sure why the the piece that does the front all of the windows are already like clear but the piece that does the back the little there's little cardboard pieces in the window that you want to poke out as you're going some of them may have fallen out but you want to save those because there's a really good purpose for them afterwards um so we're going to pull all the pieces out i also found that because you once you start gluing you want to be able to just grab a piece and go we're going to stack them in the reverse order of how we put them on the house so that we can really quickly just grab a piece and go. So this is the back piece. You can see one of the little squares has popped out of it. Um, there's more to come. So like I said, it might be loose in your bag. It's possible it popped out during like the manufacturing. When I made my, I'm going to use them for a walkway. Spoiler alert. Um, when I made my walkway, I did not use all of the pieces. So if you're missing one, it's not the end of the world. You could always like sort of make more if you needed and make them kind of similar just kind of copy the idea, but if you pop out all these little pieces and then store them in your little baggie for now so you don't lose them, we'll use those at the end. I'll show you how I made the walkway and 
the girls in this class were genius and they made all sorts of creative things with those little pieces but for now we're just going to put them off to the side uh, i guess the other thing to tell you is you want to have and, and it's not going to look like it because as we go through this video you're going to see it's rather clumsy at times it's way easier to put together just in person like by yourself than it is to try to do it on a video in limited space with a camera right above you but you want to make sure you have a good you know i want to say 18 by 18 inch like space open in front of you so you have room to move the house and flip and do your things um that's just the little piece i added in we'll talk about that later for the the walkway so if you, yeah if you can have your other pieces off to the side and like those all those decorative pieces that you can see right now Put those off to the left, let's say, if you're right-handed. Put those off to the left. The pieces we're going to add by glue, set them on your right so you can grab them quickly as you're gluing. Um, also in your package, though, that you want to get out at the beginning, where your tear and tape is, the roll of tear and tape that's in there, there's three little pieces of wire. I did not read the instructions close enough because I, let's be honest, I have time I don't even read the instructions. And I didn't read what it said, and so I didn't put the wires in. I was so excited to put my house together. I didn't put the wires in where I was supposed to and ended up just sort of jabbing them in later. And then my bats were constantly moving. So if you want to put them in so your bats will stay where you put them, you definitely want to put those in at the at the gluing stage, which I will show you. So take those out so that you have them ready to go. Otherwise, you will forget them like I did. So this piece here is the piece that makes the like the, the roof of the widow's peak. And it's the last piece that goes on the house. So we're going to take it and our three little pieces of wire and we're going to put those on the bottom of our stack last last on so that's the first one in the pile then the roof is the is the second last so put the roof in the pile next um, the back piece that we just cleaned out that goes next in the pile then the two side pieces and as you're going if you want to fold these pieces over um, then they're ready to go it's not the end of the world if you forget which i did once and you've already got it glued together to just fold like the roof pieces down but it's easier if they're all done because you don't want to risk opening up your seams the pieces on the side you want to try to like compress as much as you can to get like so they sit at a 90 degree angle the roof pieces you don't right now they're perfectly straight up you just want to bend them over kind of once they'll pop up a bit you you actually want those angled uh, but you don't want them perfectly straight so you got to give them one little bend the corner pieces though the more you can kind of like squish them and crease them to get so that they sit at a 90 degree angle the less pull there is on your house so the front piece is going to be the first thing that we're going to start sticking stuff to um, and this is the one that folds a little bit different it's the only one that folds the other ones are all flat sides so you can watch me now fold it the wrong way because <laughs> i did it a few times and and the, the problem is I, most of the time I had the, the gray side down and this is how you would fold it. But for some reason I had gray side up, folded it the same way, which made it backwards. The one thing I did learn, though, by doing it backwards is if you fold all your seams one way and then you fold them the other way as you're trying to compress them to get them to go to 90, um, it actually makes it a little easier to get those square corners. It takes some of the some of the pull off. The, like it's not constantly trying to spring back because you've you've. Um, folded it both ways but yes as you can see um I've, I've corrected myself now you want the widow's peak like the tall bump out in the front to stick out to the front and then your little side pieces this is what gives the house dimension at the front and this is the reason there's a notch in the roof which you'll see later so you want to fold it first to make sure that you got the the bump out to go in the right direction and then roof pieces down and your side pieces again you want to get as close to 90 as you can so give them a good squish and pinch them and fold them forward and then backward if you need to but try to get them as 90 degree ish as you can uh one thing i will show you uh because this was a genius tip i saw it on pinterest i have no idea who anymore i just saw it and that was the end of it but for your glue gun especially the ones that have the cords and they just have this tiny little like teeth or like feet in the front to lead it on i find mine is constantly falling over or the extension or the cord on the bit is kind of pulling it off the desk plus it drips so this little genius invention go to the dollar store buy yourself a napkin holder and a silicone oven mitt 
and make yourself a glue gun holder. And the best part is it holds the extra glue sticks right next to you because having run out partway through a tab, you don't want to do that. You want to be able to, as soon as you need to grab another one, quickly grab one, stick it in the back of your glue gun, couple squeezes, and you keep going so you don't lose the heat of what you've already applied. Now, ideally, you want your napkin holder to be like the two sides and the divider in the middle to all be at the same height. And then your oven mitt just fits right over top of it. I couldn't find one at my dollar stores. I did get the oven mitts there. So I ended up just getting this one off Amazon. It was like $9, I think. It's very nice um, cast iron or black metal. I don't know if it's cast iron. Um, so in the end, it turns out I now have a, like a, a carry handle for mine. And all I did was the piece of cardboard that went across the middle that like told you what kind it was. I just put my silicone um, oven mitt over top of it. And I did, I just kind of bent it around a little bit. So now it sits, it also catches the drips, which is nice. So now it sits right beside me. I'm right-handed, so it sits that way. So I can grab the glue gun. I put it on quickly. I try to like knock the glue as much as I can onto the side of the house. So I don't drag the glue strings across, pop it into that thing. And I'm not worried about it dripping on my desk or falling over or falling on the floor because that's going to slow me down as I'm trying to put my pieces together. And like I said, the spare glue sticks right beside you. So thank you, genius person who came up with this invention that is not me. I mean, it was easy to make, but it is definitely, uh, definitely saved me and my desk. I think I'm just telling you about the little feet that I already told you about. Those little two little feet in the front, useless. <laughs> but it's a handy little glue gun. This glue gun just came from, uh, I think, also from the dollar store. So you don't have to get fancy with the glue gun. You just need something that heats up. Um, you can also see where like the little window is that tells you when you're running out of your glue stick. Very handy to keep an eye on that part. Like I said, you don't want to be mid-tab and run out of glue. Um, you want to be able to... Like get just enough you have to make sure you've got enough of it in though that it will like accept a second glue stick but yeah keep an eye on that while you're gluing okay so at the beginning i said the, one of the keys to this house is that you want it to be square and level so i'm going to show you as i'm putting this house together and i'm going to hold it up to try to show you on the camera but every time it comes time to put um the joints together you want your house sitting like the bottom of the house sitting on your desk so you get it as level as possible and then you put the corners as square as you can i think it's a slight design flaw stamp it up is genius i love their products and there's probably a reason they did it this way um but the, the joints that you make you can see in the front and the back instead of i would have liked it if the tabs were on the end pieces so that the joints were on the side and not as obvious but so you want to try to make those as as square as you can so straight on the desk square as you can so if you dry fit so if you take it before you put any glue and just make sure you understand how they're going to connect and where the corners are going to go because you want to put the glue on the tab and squish it together as quickly as you can you don't want glue oozing out but you want to get it close to the edge as as tight as you can so that that seam is held together as close as it can because you're looking straight at it at the front of your house. Now, once your house is all decorated, you don't really even notice the corners as much. What you start looking at is all the decorations. But as you're putting it together, that's that's what you notice. Um, one of the ladies in our one class, um, that bothered her. So she was just going to put like some caulking or you could put black trim or something over that. And that would take care of covering that corner too. Or you could put gray trim and just get it to blend right in. So on all the tabs, whether I was using um, the tear and tape or a glue gun, I always put two strips. In this case, I'm making kind of like a square trapezoid, I think is the right shape. Stacy, you'd be proud of me. I think I remember that from high school science um, or maybe elementary science. It's been a while. But yeah, you want to put, don't just put one because that's all the weight is now pulling on one. So two little strips of glue or two strips of, of tear and tape. And as soon as you've got it together, again, house on the on the desk, get that squared up as best you can and then try to squeeze the seams together so that the glue spreads out a bit and holds that seam as tight as you can. Uh, once you've given it a minute to kind of sit like that, then I take it and lay it like flat on the desk where I can you know, give it a good rub and, and spread out the glue as much as possible and make sure you get good contact. So like I said, you can sort of see that that's where the joint is, but if you do it, if you do it with the glue and you get enough on there, it holds tight and you don't really notice it. The one thing I will tell you though is if you're if you're not straight, 
um, don't just try to pull them apart to re-glue them because the gray paper that is uh, stuck to the like cardboard backing will start to separate from the cardboard and then your seams are always going to be loose. So if you do make a mistake and it's bad enough that you want to try to fix it, um, use your heat gun or try with a knife or something to like cut it, but don't just try to pull the pieces apart because you'll it, it will never go back together the same way because you've loosened the, the gray layer. So we've got our front on. We're now going to, or we've got one side added to our front. Now we're going to add, um, I think I added the other side. Oh, no, I added the back. Sorry, I told you the wrong order at the beginning. It's okay, you just pull it out. So we're going to add our back on and it's the same thing. Two strips of glue on the tab. As soon as you've got the glue on, throw your glue gun into your handy dandy little holder, box down on the table, and square that corner up as much as possible. You want the corner to be level, like you want it to be straight up and down, but you also want to make sure that it's not too far forward or too far back. So I use my thumbs. You can see my thumb right there. And my other thumb is at the bottom. So as I'm holding them together, I'm kind of using my thumb as if as a guide. So I should feel the edge up against the thumb at the top and the thumb at the bottom. So I know that my thing is not pushing forward or backward one way. That's an old construction tip my dad taught me, but that's, you can just kind of roughly line it up using your thumbs. Like if they're both pushing at equal pressure on your thumb, then you've got it straight. Give it a second, flip it over, give it a good uh, push across the whole seam. And then you can, um, you can you can make sure it's good i didn't have to put a whole lot of time in between layers like by the time i did this and then i got it and i kept like making sure i was still square and making sure i knew what order i was going in because at one point i almost put um the two side pieces together and that would have like screwed up the whole house so i think that's why maybe i had it in my mind that the two side pieces were in order on your pile so don't do that um and now yeah we're going to put our last one on and this is now going to make like one big loop, everything's going to join together on this. So this time we have two tabs to put to join up this one side piece. Um, and you want to make sure that, so this is kind of our last step. If you if you can get this one square, then it's going to make your roof a whole lot easier. Um, so each one of these steps as you're going, you're making sure you're putting it straight down, you're making it level, you're sealing your tabs, and that will help you to have, like I said, a square product. The house is still fairly floppy at this point and even once you get like this last side piece on it's still going to be fairly floppy what's going to stop it from flopping stopping the flopping um <laughs> that's old british or german broad joke stopping the flopping um is when you put the roof on and we're going to put the roof on so that we're putting it on like the front part first so where that little bump out is because that bump out not being a flat piece being the piece with the bend in it is what makes your house keep moving until you stabilize that front piece so once we get our last side piece on which we got one more again I can repeat it again <laughs> speed is of the essence uh two strips make it level make it square I don't know I kept when I even on the original video I just kept thinking I just got to keep saying the thing, same thing over and over again <laughs> I kept saying it to myself too, though, as I was doing it. Okay, make sure you're square. Make sure you're not too far to the front. Can I feel it on both thumbs? Yep. Okay, good. Now flip it over so I can get the glue spread out. Okay, good. <laughs> uh, the thing I did notice too, you don't want to be too close to the edge. You want to be close enough that a little bead will like spread a bit. I did notice though that if you're if it did ooze out at all, it is much easier to clean it up right away. It cools off quick enough you can touch it fairly quickly. Um, right away don't like let it sit and dry forever because then it really adheres to the paper and you don't want to rip the, the paper off so if you do have a little bit of a squeeze try to like just kind of roll it with your thumb thumb and it will usually roll off and if not take like a little exacto knife or something to your crafting knife to kind of cut the pieces off that are oozing out but i wouldn't wait too long to do it because you don't want it to stick too too much to the paper okay so again i'm going to say dry fit i say that a lot when i tell people how to do stuff too put your house in front of you I found it easier to go sideways because I could see better what I was doing but and figure out how the house is going to go now you want your roof your roof just have to fold in half there's one seam fold it in half but before you put any glue at all on the roof make sure you understand how the roof is going to go on and how it's going to hold that front and keep its shape with the bump out going the way it is because like I said this whole step now is going to stop the house from being so floppy and is going to be the key to making sure it stays square if your roof is crooked, your roof will keep popping off as you try to glue it down. We found that out the hard way. 
So put your roof on. I find it easier to put the roof on kind of straight up and down, you know, nestle it into place. So it's around, then flip it, like flip the back of the roof down and hold your hands tight. So you should feel the roof hit the top of those two side peaks, right? The flaps are underneath now. So you're just kind of hitting the edge of those pieces. If it is, if it is hitting tight like that, then your house is going to stay nice and secure. You're not going to have big gaps on the side. The other thing you need to get a feel for, and I use my fingertips to do this. Like I kind of stick just between my thumb and my fingertips as I'm holding down, but you want to make sure that the overhang on either side of the house is the same. It's very easy to, that it all looks like it's straight, but if you don't look kind of take a look under the underside or use your fingers as a gauge, like the house should cover the same amount of each fingertip. If you put both fingertips under one under each side, and so you want to do that because if you push your house, like you could have it at one point, I was getting ready to glue it down. And I think I had, you know, an eighth of an inch on one side and three quarters on the other side, as opposed to, you know, that's probably not very good math, but a half an inch on either finger. So just make sure you get a feel for, okay, that's, that's about how much should be on either side before it's square. Now, when we put these houses together with tear and tape, you can pull all the pieces off, do the, do it in the same stages and you're likely not going to have any issue. That's how I did mine. I pulled all the pieces, backings off. Um, we tried it with glue. You cannot glue the entire house at once. The glue won't stay hot enough to get all the tabs on. At least I didn't find it did. Um, even trying to do the front half and then the back half, I found it was harder to keep it square and it kept sticking when I didn't want it to and pulling it apart. So easiest way we found is the two front tabs, the two tabs that are close enough to that front bump out. We're going to glue those first. Then we're going to glue the two tabs next to them. And that will get the front of the house done and then we'll glue the whole back at once so again i found keeping my house turned sideways i've got my hand my left hand because i'm right-handed i got my left hand on the on the the bump out part and i'm holding it and i've got my roof which i have folded in half is sitting beside the house so that as soon as i can get the glue on i'm ready to put the roof on um I, I, you're very quickly you're gonna have to put the glue on and then you're going to have to turn your house forward um, so you can flip it down to make sure it's tight against the like the peaks of the roof, the side pieces. And you have to kind of put your fingers on the side to make sure that you got the overhang equal. Once you start getting, once the first one is on, you, this step gets easier each time. You're going to do it three times, but it gets easier each time. But again, make sure your spot is clear. You've got the house beside you. You've got the roof beside you so that you're not knocking things when you flip it because... Once the glue goes on, say it together now, speed is of the essence. <laughs> so when you go to put your roof on, you got the piece with the notch, go straight up and down, like have your roof as vertical as you can. So you're not touching any of the glue so that you can get it on either side of the, of the bump out, then kind of flop it down, turn your house around and do the, do the kind of square up and overhang check. And then at this point you can kind of rub your thumbs along you can see me doing that you can rub your thumbs along where those two tabs are and you will actually feel it's not hot hot but you can feel warmth so you know the glue gun is making contact at that point because you can feel it you can sort of feel the warmth through the cardboard then very carefully and every time i flip it over i'm holding on to that bump out because it's the easiest way to keep the roof from popping off just kind of flip it over enough that you can get your hand in there and then you can rub on those two tabs to spread the glue out as much as possible because you have the bump out, you can't just lay the house on its side because it won't lay flat at this point. So you just kind of have to brace it with your hand and rub on those points of contact to give the glue a good chance to seal. By the time you've done this, the glue is pretty much cooled enough that you can flip it back over and move on to the next step. Now, I know because even as I was trying to do it, I was like trying to show you what I'm doing and do this at the same time is very awkward um, to try to get it in video. But if you're not trying to show somebody what you're doing and you can get a better angle to look at it, it is much easier to do. So you're just going to hold on to the front. You don't want to put too much pressure on the tabs you just glued. Just kind of pull your roof back a little bit. The tabs will move and put glue on the two tabs, the, the other two tabs on the front of the house. Now, same thing. Slap your roof down. Make sure it's tight against the, the peaks of the house. Make sure your overhang is equal and give it a little bit of a rub. You'll feel the heat again. Flip your house over, push your tabs down again. So that's the, those are the two tabs there I'm showing you because I'm out of sync with my video. <laughs> um, 
this is the hard part of trying to do voiceover. I was obviously telling you a great story about those tabs because it went way longer the first time. I am slightly known for the storytelling, so who knows what I was telling you about at that point. But um, this second one, like I said, it will go easier because the first two are helping already to make it stable. So when you when you do the second one, it gets even easier. But it's just the same steps, repeating them until you get the house squared away. So am I still talking or what is my video doing? There we go. Oh, again. And like I said, every step, you're pushing it there. So you, you don't want to be able to look at the side of the house and see big gaps. So if you don't um, push on that roof and, and you only want to push on the roof, like where the edges are so that you've got nice contact points. But you want to do that every time just so that on each step of the way, you're getting that seal on the side as tight as possible. Because... Well, I live in a place with, that has a pretty decent winter, so you don't want gaps in your house if it'll get cold inside. So now that we've got the front half of the house on, and you still, again, you want to be careful with, you're pushing all your seams, you're getting everything secure, and the glue is cooling fairly quickly, but you still don't want to push too hard on the roof when you lift it back up again to do this the last stages because um, it still hasn't 100% cured. I did these houses on the weekend for a class on Tuesday. So they had a full like 48 hours at least um, to sit and dry before they got used. None of them came apart. Nothing happened. I had to very carefully like transport them so that they didn't get squished, but they all lasted the whole thing. Um, so you, so do we have to do to assemble it? And then if you can, yeah, just set it off to the side to give it a bit of drying time, but or curing time. So yeah, lift up the front or the back part of the house, I should say, and you can do all the tabs at once. Now, to me at this point, you want your sides to are the part you're going to see. And then the front is the biggest one. So again, check your glue because this is when, on one of the houses where I ran out was on the big, long front strip. Um, and I didn't have enough glue and I had to stop and then I had to kind of, I could see that the one place it wasn't catching as much. So I had to kind of dip in from behind and, and add some glue to it. But put glue on your two side, the two side tabs and on the whole front tab, make your square again or trapezoid and do it as quickly as you can to all three tabs. And then again, plop the, this time you want to turn those backwards so you can actually see what you're doing, but put the roof down again. So it's nice and tight up against the eaves. Check your sides with your fingertips to make sure you have the same amount of overhang and, uh, and then kind of rub where the seams are and you will feel it like even when you do all three tabs at once so the first two tabs are not as hot as when the, you know the other ones you will still feel heat in those three contact points this is me putting glue on it takes a second i realize now that in some of these shots the house does actually get fairly close to the camera and it's really hard to see what i'm doing So there we go again. I can tell I'm checking the overhang and now making sure it's tight against the, the, the side walls and then a little bit of, of push in there on the outside to make sure it works. Now the beauty on this side of the house is because there's no bump out or anything like that. Once you've got this part done, you can actually flip your house over and just lay it on the that side of the roof because it will lay flat and then you can push on all four of, or all three of the tabs once you've done this part. And that just gives, I think it just gives it a chance to get as much, like squish the glue as much as possible, get as much contact as possible. Um, I don't know if you're absorbing some of the heat or whatever, but it seems to like cool off faster. And then you, you, it feels nice and secure. So at this point, you should be able to set your house on the table and it should be fairly level and it should be squared up. And now it's more solid. Now it's a house. It's not a floppy bunch of cardboard that you're trying to deal with. So last step we have to do for the roof or like pre-assembly, I guess, at this point, is the is the little widow's peak. There's a decorative piece that gets glued on this afterwards. You'll see it in the instructions when you look at like all the where all the decorations go. So this is just like a, a plain black front. Now you want to make sure that you know which way this goes before you put glue on it so that you don't act because I did the one time and I knew which way it went. I was like eight houses deep and I, I almost glued it on backwards. 
which would not have worked. It would have made this huge gap in the front. So it would not have worked. So fold all your pieces together, like all your corners, and fold your house so that you get a feel for how it goes together. And then put it on your house. No glue, no nothing. Just we're dry fitting again so you make sure that you understand how it goes. <clears throat> the two gray triangles are going to go down the side of the push out. And the top part there where you can see where it all folds together and there's the top part where you can see the seams, that's going to be basically pointing to the sky. I think my video is playing back at a slightly different pace than it did when I did it live. So that's part of what's making this a little weird. So you can see the very top of the house pointing up is where the seams in the black are. And then right on either side of my thumb, that's those two gray squares are right behind it. So when we fit this, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get those two gray squares where they join the front of the house to be level with the front of that bump out. And with any luck, I will pull the house forward a little bit because just off what I can see right there is the, so the back of that black piece should line up with the peak of the house. Now this is the step that I forgot and had to fix, but this is a step where you want to do right. Because as we glue these side seams, this is where we're going to add those three pieces of wire you can see sitting on the table. So you have three and once they're in and you let the glue dry, you can bend them to make them go where you want. I opted for two on one side, one on the other side, and then it, it by the time you like, bend and twist them a little bit it gives full coverage of the roof like so the bats aren't all grouped in one side there's there's no like 100% way you could do it if you want them all on one side that's fine if you want to glue them to the side of the house it's fine but if you want to put all three pieces of wire and all three bats on the top this is the easiest way to do it I, at first I put two strips of glue but then I found it really hard to get those those wires to stay still so what I found was easier is just two little strips of glue set the wire in it and just give it a second to sort of take heat. You don't want it totally dry at this point because you do want it to, to catch on those spots as well. And then just put glue, like squares of glue in between. Try not to get too much bulk where the wires are. So once I put the wires down, I kind of tried to fill in the glue in the middle. That's why you want your the glue like around the wires to still be a little wet. Then squish it together. Make sure that is nice and level. And then when you're pushing on the side of your house, you don't want to bend this piece. But as long as you can see my hands are on either side, as long as your hands are on the edges, like right where those corners are, you can put a fair bit of pressure to hold that closed and it won't bend. If you're too high up or too low down, you will, you'll bend in the sides. So just kind of hold it that way. Or if you need to, you can lay it on a table and kind of reach in and, and rub those seams to get them to seal. Um, and then just give it a second, push, you know, push extra hard around the pieces of wire and, and get it closed in there. On the other side, because we have one wire left, I just put the one little strip of glue in the middle. So they're kind of all offset. Again, I'm not sure because you can bend the wires afterwards and the wires are plenty long. Um, I don't know if it mattered as much exactly where the distribution is, but this worked for me. So I'm just going to hold that in place for a second. It is, it is like the part that's hanging off. There's way more of it than the part that's attached. So it's a little bit kind of top heavy. So just give it enough time to grab so it's not falling while you're gluing. Glue around and then tighten that seal up. Now, once you have the wires in, it's a lot easier to remember which way is up on the house because you want the wires to go straight into the air. The trick is, which way is the front? <laughs> so the part that's on the right side of the screen right now that you can see like next to my right hand there, that's, that's the open back. That's what's going to butt up against the roof, the peak of your roof. The, the part that you can see with the two squares, that's what's going to go up against the house. So again, before you put any glue or anything on, it's nice to, now that you've got it glued into a square, to try and see it. What you can see right now, I'm using my thumbs again to try to make sure it's as level as possible against the front of the house. If one corner or the other of the, the bump out in your house is pushed too far in or it's not 100% square, you can kind of put your finger in the window carefully, like not, not against the min minions, I think they're called, something like that. Not against the strips that like make the squares on the window, but like the edge of the window. And you can kind of pull a little bit to try to pull it out. Because once you go to put the glue on, if it's pushed far, too far back, unless you're fast enough at that stage, um, it's going to be kind of pushed back a little. 
I don't think it's the end of the world. Um, so the front should be nice and like square and the back should line up with the peak of the roof. When I did my house the first time, um, I was more concerned with the front than I was with the back. So I made sure the front was all perfectly lined up. So my, on mine, the back overhangs a little bit, but you don't see it looking at the house. I mean, I know because I was being critical of it because I was doing all these houses, but you want to kind of hold both. I think if you can't make both work, you want the front to be lined up better because that's the thing you're going to see the most. And if the back hangs over a little, it's not the end of the world. So yeah, we're going to put glue just on the edges of the two gray panels. That's the only way we're, we're holding this whole thing and it all holds together, no problem. When you once you have the glue you have to pretty much glue both sides at the same time because you can't do one side and then get the glue gun in without really bending the house a lot and you don't want to do that so you're going to put again i put just a narrow at some point i'm going to show you a narrow rectangle of glue on the inside of each flap and then very quickly turn the house around well, I guess I squiggled there, but I made sure there's enough. I I I want to I want to have at least one straight line bead close to the edge, but then enough glue behind it that it'll hold. You have more room to hold that, and if it squishes out a little bit, you're not ever going to see it. Um, when you go to put it on, hold the so hold it so the front is towards you. Use the back of your hands, like use your fingertips, to pull those sides out just a little bit, so that as you slide the house over the place and you're getting it into place, you're not dragging glue everywhere right? Like you have a couple seconds, but you want to just kind of pull them out a little bit, get your thing in place, and then push the sides down. Make sure your front is squared up. Again, run your thumbs down, make sure the edges are level. And then at this point, you should be able to check and make sure the back is in, in place. And then same thing, just put your pressure on the sides. Just make sure you're not too far back where you're going to push the soft parts. Just make sure you're like right on the corners, and you can just sort of put some pressure on to hold those tabs to make them flat. So you now have your house assembled. If you have time, like I said, you can set it off to the side to let it dry. Um, and if not, you can get on with decorating. Um, and I'm going to tell you that because you have your your pieces of wire there, when you go to bend your wire into shape, like put your bats on it and bend your wire into shape, make sure you're kind of holding on to the house on those corner seams so you're not just pulling on the wire and try and like possibly opening up that seam again. It, it just it's just preventative you don't I mean it's probably not the end of the world mine where I forgot I basically just went back afterwards and I poked them in but then they kept spitting the wires kept spitting so then I put little daubs of glue where I had poked them and I jabbed them into the glue and then they stopped spinning so if you did forget that that's an easy enough fix now at this point you're going to take out all of your decorations to put on um, there are shutters and all sorts of different decorations You'll notice in the shutters, one side is kind of short and wide, and all the other shutters are tall and skinny. The short, wide shutters are the ones that go on the um, chandelier window, the one at the widow's peak, in the bump out in the front, and all the other ones just go around the outside. Um, your dimensionals are in there, and I think I might show you this later in the video, but I'm going to give you the rundown as I think of it. Um, there's black dimensionals in there that go on the back side of the shutters so that they're a little bit away from the house to give you some texture and dimension. The dimensionals are pretty much the exact width of the shutter. So if you want it easier and you don't have to try to be so precise so that you don't have pieces sticking out, just cut your dimensionals in half. You put one on the top, one in the middle, one on the bottom of the like halves. So you're only really using one and a half dimensionals. Um, and it's, it's much easier to do that than it is to try to place those full ones. And you'll have leftovers at the end anyway, so it doesn't matter. It's so cute because that's actually a ghost, but all you can see is his face. So this is my finished product that I'm showing you now. Um, so yeah, the one that's on the right, I hadn't finished yet. That's the one that kept spinning around. But you can see you bend the wires in kind of different directions and the bats pretty much cover enough of the roof that you get some good, some good uh, dispersion of your bats. Because, you know, it's very scientific. Haunted houses. That's the piece that gets added on. That piece is in the in the punch out section, um, the punch out section, the die cuts. I call them the punch outs. Uh, let's see. You've got a cat, pumpkins, the door. Don't your little that little tiny um, door knocker, a little plastic silver plastic door knocker, is in. It's in with the wire and the tear and tape. So you want to, and it's just on a tiny little piece of 
of like see-through plastic. So it's a very small element. You want to make sure you don't uh, lose that as you're taking your kit apart. Um, you can see through vellum when you put when you put adhesive on vellum, you can see through it. So for my little ghost that's kind of hanging out on the side, I just put one little strip of, of tear and tape right down the middle and then stuck it on the house. So the only place you see the glue is like where it's attached to the house, but because the house is darker behind it anyways, you don't really notice that it's glue. Um, the little door handle, so the pumpkin and the cat, um, I put dimensionals behind those as well, just so that they pop out a little bit. I used glue dots to put on the door knocker, and then I took glue dots and just kind of rolled them up to put on the door handle so it stood away from the door a little bit. The, I think I put mine backwards to how the, they actually show in the picture, but my spider web is on the left hand of my house. Um, they're just a little fold over piece that attaches to the side and tucks under the eave. And then I think that the spider was just supposed to be stuck either to the house window or something, but I wanted to make mine move. So mine kind of swings a little bit. And all I did was take the piece that it came out of. This is off a different kit. So that same piece, once I popped out this, the spider's web and the ghost, and I cut a very, very thin, as thin as I could make it, strip of vellum off the side of that, like what was left over. And then I just folded it over a little bit at the top and hooked it over top of the web so that it's loose. And I have like a little rolled up glue dot that is holding that closed, but it's not fastened. So I've made like a loop that is held closed by the glue dot and the loop just happens to go through the web. And then I just, the spider at the bottom, I just took a piece of dimensional. I think it was a cat, I think it was a quarter of a dimensional. Um, and I stuck that, like the little piece of web that was hanging down between the spider and that, so that it kind of swings a bit. Uh, I'm not sure why I'm showing you the top of the house, but there's the top of the house. It's <laughs> um, an upside down top of the house. I'm not really sure what I'm doing. So yeah, those are the shutters. Um, the, the shutters, you can see my one shutter is a little wonky. Um, I put it on crooked and I tried to just pull it back off. Don't do that. If you put them on and it's crooked, you want to, you want to cut it with a dimensional. Now you can see the back of the house right now. I'm just using my cell phone to shine a light into the back of the house. So you see, there's a cat and a skeleton. The front is so decorated. And then I thought if this was sitting on like a dining room table or something, um, there's nothing on the back of the house. So I made a cat and a skeleton. Those die cuts are just on a straight black cardstock. They're from last year's bag of bones uh, bundle that I had that I absolutely love and will, you know, keep forever. So the same as you put the windows on where you just put a bit of adhesive where it can't be seen. I just did the same thing, like his elbow and his knee, the part that's over the cardboard. There's a bit of adhesive behind that. The cat is actually being held on just by its tail. There's adhesive behind its tail and I just stuck it down. So they're sitting on the inside of the house. When the house is not lit up, you barely see that they're there. But as soon as you light the house up, then it looks like you've got like a black cat and a skeleton in your house. And it just gave a bit of character to the back. Um, you, you probably don't wanna sit there with your cell phone the whole time, shining it into your house though to light it up. So you could use tea lights. Um, I bought tea lights at the dollar store. They happen to be the kind that flicker, which, you know, bonus for me. Um, and I'll show you in a minute how that works. I made a base plate for mine and I did the same thing for the girls. So they had, so they could make sort of a scene. These are 10 by 14 cake plates that I got at the dollar store. So they buck, buck 25 each. Um, I put mossy meadow cardstock over them. One piece is the full eight and a half and I trimmed it to 10 inches. The other piece is seven inches wide also trimmed to like 10 inches in length. If you put the big piece down first, like the eight and a half by 10 piece down first, then you put the seven by 10 down piece over top of it, your seam on your two pieces of cardstock runs right down the middle of your cake plate. So your base plate. So that way, when you put your walkway down, which we'll show you in a minute, when you put your walkway down, um, it covers the seam. Now the house is gonna cover the back part, but the very front part, the walkway covers the seam. So that's how I did mine. It probably doesn't matter if you can see a seam, but that's how I did mine. And then the kit comes with the two pieces of fence that you just pop out and then fold um, and the tree and stuff. So you have somewhere to put all of those pieces 
on your plate. So like if you're moving it or if your shelf is kind of shallow and you want to be able to put that in front, you can put it on this cardboard piece. I did not glue all my pieces to the cardboard because I think it will be easier for storage if I can take the house off and all the little elements and then put the base plate kind of sideways in a box so that it's not as wide to try to store. So here's my tea lights that I bought. Uh, like I said, they flicker, which was a bonus. I didn't realize they did that. You need three of them. Um, the one that goes in the middle that is behind that candelabra or candelabra chandelier, because the door is what's right on the ground. So the two of them you can set just like right onto your base plate. But the one in the middle, if you set on the base plate, all the light is behind the door, which is solid. So you won't see it. So you need to take your middle candlelight and lift it up. I think it's about four inches. So when I was making mine the first time sitting at my craft desk, I just took what I had to hand. So I had like three rolls of ribbon stacked on each other and I put my tea light on top of it. So that's about the size you need. In this case, I'm just using a glass. Um, if you don't have a battery failure, like if something doesn't go wrong with your tea lights, these don't really give off a lot of heat. They should never be left unattended. If you're going to turn them on and leave them in your house, you should never just like turn them on and leave them for any length of time. They don't get really hot though. The glass just happened to be the right size, but it's probably better to have it sitting on glass than on paper anyways. So that's all I did is I just put the middle one a little bit higher up so that when you turn them all on, that's another reason to not glue your house down, I guess. If you are going to put tea lights in, unless you have remote controlled ones, which I know you can get, or like little remote ones, you have to lift the house up to turn your lights on and off. So, But that way they're at least positioned behind the windows and then your stuff will glow out. And when I did this with the girls in the class, I turned the room off, the lights off in our center and the house glowed and every one of them was like sold on why they needed tea lights at that point. So here's our final little step. Um, everything's set to go. We put our little fence piece off. We take our little tree, which is another one of the punch outs, the die cuts. And we put our little tree. And then I personally thought that my house was unbalanced <laughs> because I had my lovely house and my fence pieces and I had one bare corner because I needed something to offset the tree. So if you come to one of my classes, I think you're working hard making your crafts um, that you deserve a treat. So, uh, oh, I didn't show you the treat yet. I jumped ahead. Okay, we'll go back one. There's a treat coming. Huh, oh, teaser. We, we have to put in our walkway. This piece is one and a quarter inches by three and a half, and it's out of smoky slate. It does not matter if you use exactly that color or that dimension, but that just happens to be the one I used. So these are all the little pieces that we punched out at the front. I put two strips of tear and tape down the middle because even with that gap, it doesn't matter. Um, I put two of the little pieces on the end, on one end, and then I flipped it over and then I started lining them up. So in the end, right where I'm pointing there, there's a gap between those. And the reason for that gap is so that you can, if you don't want to glue everything to your base, you can put that over top of where the seam is, like right in the center, and the piece of cardboard right by where the door is will actually sit in that little gap so that you're not constantly adjusting your, your walkway because it's kind of tucked. So the two, the two like on their own bricks are actually inside your house and the rest is sticking out. So it kind of holds it in place a little better. Now, if you if you have enough storage or you, it's not really the end of the world to tape that, you could glue that piece down. You also could just glue the cobblestones down in like a little path straight to the green cardstock at this point, to the mossy meadow. Or you could, even on the gray piece, you could have them like crooked. Um, one of the girls in our class, she flipped over like every third or fourth piece is actually flipped over. So it's the brown cardboard side and the rest of them are gray. So it looks like cobblestone with different colors. It was a very creative group of girls I was working with. Um, some had borrowed from their friends and made long winding paths. Some took those little pieces and stuck them on the side of the house randomly. So every now and again, it looked like there was like a 3D brick sticking out. Lots of things you can do with those little pieces. Okay. Now maybe it's time for the treat. <laughs> yes, it is. So again, my same bag of bones set of dies. I made tombstones. They're slightly bigger than they need to be. Or I guess maybe they're crypts because they have the front piece and the back piece, but whatever. Um, so everybody gets a treat when they come to class. I happened to find little chocolates that look like skulls to put in them. And this just sits on the other side so that it, it um, kind of balances the tree on one side and a completely blank yard on the other. And it just fits nicely into the, uh, once you eat all the candy, nicely into your front yard. 
So I can't show you the house all assembled, all like on its tray, because as soon as I turn it, everything will fall. But if you look at the thumbnail or if I, where I've posted this, I will have a picture of the finished product. Um, you will see what the house looks like. And I'm pretty sure the picture that I posted is the one with the lights on. So you get an idea how the lights look on it. But there's our little haunted house project. And um, like I said, I had a lot of fun doing it. And I was, I was getting down to um, an art form by the time I finished. I hope you make your houses. I hope you enjoy. And happy Halloween.